this. <coughs> to my fellow classmates and uh, my lecturer, Ms. Sakun. Today, I, uh, my name is Shubhya Shamir, sorry, and I'm from Dhabi Business School, and today I will be presenting based on a poster that was designed to explain Action 1 of the Base Erosion Profit Shifting Project of BEPS, which is conducted by the Organization of Economic Cooperation, the OECD, and the G20. The OECD and G20 are conducting a mutual tax approach to tackling tax avoidance. Action 1 is about addressing the tax challenges that arise with digitalization. This is presently the top concern and the top priority for the international tax community as digitalization is one of the main reasons our world has evolved substantially over the past century. And the purpose of this action is to address the taxation problems within the digitalized economy. The purpose of VEPS is to improve the coherence of tax rules between borders, to reinforce substance requirements, and enhance transparency and certainty. So, one section of this dis uh, discussion is connected to how taxing rights on income gotten from cross-border activities should be distributed among participating countries and the changes that digitalization have brought around have made a need for the fundamental pillars of the international tax system also known as the profit allocation and nexus rules to be revisited so why does this matter because it is a high risk move to just let it be as growing dissatisfaction with all the previous international taxation systems that were founded on a brick and mortar economic setting have caused more countries to adopt heavy handed and unilateral measures. If a consensus based solution to the problem is not put forth soon, it could lead to more uncoordinated action which would impair the relevance excuse me um, which could impair the relevance and the credit of the international income tax system <coughs> but it could also cause damage to global investment and economic growth whatever action one is aiming to tackle it is here to ensure that the International Tax Framework for Multinational Enterprises, or MNEs, remain constantly relevant. With that, they want to promote an efficient economy and global welfare. They also want to make sure that governments can continue to generate revenue from not only traditional, but, dis but from digital businesses for direct and indirect tax purposes. So. What is being done to rectify these problems? The timeline that was set in the G20 to develop a consensus-based solution ends by the end of 2020. Yes, it's very ambitious. However, it also highlights the importance of addressing these problems. The inclusive framework delivered a policy note with solid propo proposals that were framed by two complementary pillars. Firstly, Pillar 1 is about the reallocation of profit and the revised nexus rules. This pillar will venture into solutions that determine where tax is paid and on what basis it will be paid, which is the nexus. As well as what percentage and profit should be taxed in the jurisdictions where consumers and producers are in. So the simple question is, how will digitally procured profit be evenly distributed between countries? While there is so much discussion on this, there is still no clear-cut solution that has surfaced yet. So the results are still inconclusive and that the reason BEPS hasn't implemented anything yet 
and they will continue working towards a concrete solution by the end of the timeline in 2020. The implications of these proposals go to the roots of the, in, of the existing international taxation architecture as they entail modifications that might go beyond the arm's length principle and no longer require physical presence. Moving on to Pillar 2. Pillar 2 is a proposal of a global anti-base erosion mechanism. It will venture into a system that ensures multinational enterprises, or m and with their digital economy and all, pay a minimum level of tax. This pillar is intended to address the remaining issues identified by BEPS by supplying countries new tools to protect their tax base from profit shifting to jurisdictions where that pay tax below uh, tax on profits below the minimum rate. This angle will leave jurisdictions free to determine their own corporate tax rates, including whether they have corporate income tax at all. But it will also allow other jurisdictions uh, in which tax income that would otherwise be sub subjected to low levels of effective taxation, thus ensuring all internationally operating businesses pay a minimum level of tax. This approach is based on the assumption that with more that with more multi uh, with um, sorry, this approach is based on the assumption that with multilateral action absent, risk of uncoordinated unilateral action to attract more tax base and protecting what is already there is definitely imminent. Pillar 2 instead seeks to put forth a multilateral framework that limits the distortive impacts of direct taxes on investment and business location decision and provides a backstop to Pillar 1 for situations where relevant profit is booked in a tax rate environment that is below the minimum rate. Moving on, in the area of VAT, Value Added Tax, and GST, Goods and Services Tax, the Action 1 report identified digitalization as the root of risk and broader tax challenges. BEPS risks arise from highly digitalized businesses having structures that ensure their businesses pay little to no value added tax on remotely delivered services and intangibles, such as patents. This can be addressed in the International Value Added Tax and Goods and Services Tax Guidelines. The rules to allocate the right to Levi, VAT and GST in jurisdictions where inputs are used for business purposes. Moving on to the broader tax challenges, it is a challenge to collect VAT and GST from online sales uh, to non-resident suppliers, particu particularly in the business-to-consumer B2C trade. There are two issues uh, as the broader tax challenges. One is uh, the remote digital suppliers to consumers, and the next one is the importing of low-value goods. BAPS Action 1 recommends the application of the principles of the VAT and GST guidelines with the connect collection mechanisms included. As a conclusion, the recommendations of BEPS Action 1 have been drafted into the 2016 International Value Added Tax Guidelines. They have been complemented in the 2017 Report on Effective Collection of VAT and GST when the supplier is not within the taxable jurisdiction. And the 2019 Report on the Role of Digital Platforms in the Collection of VAT and GST in Online Sales all of which provide guidance on the implementation of, uh, of the implementation of the value added tax guidelines in jurisdictions. The implementation of BEPS Action 1 VAT recommendations have received a positive response. Of, uh, of these, about 40 countries have implemented the whole collection mechanism for the collection of VAT on cross-border sales. The BEPS implementation report confirms that the that implementation has greatly improved compliance levels and yielded substantial tax revenues. 
and level the playing field between domestic suppliers and foreign vendors. That's all. Thank you for your time. Are there any questions? Yes. Uh, earlier you explained about VAT. I'd just like to clarify who is actually eligible to be taxed by VAT. Uh, thank you. Uh, VAT is applied to all transactions carried out in the European Union for payment by a taxable person. So any individual or body that supplies goods and services in the course of business is eligible to be taxed by VAT. Alright, thank you. Yes? So you mentioned that the BETS is working to a solution to 2020, but what are they actually doing now? So for now, recent work has been focused on examining proposals that have the aim to revise the existing profit allocation and nexus rules with a view to give more taxing rights to the market country which is, which is the country where the country uh, which is the country where the consumers are located anyone else yes uh, just now you mentioned about the jurisdiction of VAT yes recommendations how many is it? how many jurisdiction has implemented VAT recommendations over 50 jurisdictions have adopted rules for the application of VAT to B to, to business to consumer supplies of services and intangibles from online sales. Yes. You mentioned that is they have applied to online sales. What about the other type of sales? Uh, because now they are trying to deal with it uh, in digitalization as at first. So now they are just trying to revise the Nexus rules. So they haven't come to, uh, come up uh, come up with their consensus-based solution. But is there any move towards trying to implement this? Yes. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much.